it's been fun to be a part of this community since Clinic Sites was welcomed in. I just want to say I am a co-founder. Uh, I have a great team uh, with me. My brother, Matt, Phil, Kelty, Josh is on the call. He'll be taking some questions. So Clinic Sites really is a, a partner in the Jane community. And we love uh, helping you guys as you help uh, your, your, your clients. So helping the helpers is something that's close to our heart, close to, to my heart. And, uh, and I know as a team member of Jane, that you, you love that. And so, yeah, what a, what a great opportunity to help, especially with a topic that people do struggle a lot with, which is building a brand and not just building any kind of brand, but like an outstanding brand, because we really want to just, we don't just want to be status quo. We don't just want to blend in. We want our brand to stand out. Why? Because you stand out. You know that you've worked hard. You've invested a ton in your career and, uh, and you've, you know, went to school and put all this time in and you're good at what you do. If you weren't good at what you do, you know, Probably maybe this isn't the webinar for you because we don't want to promote people that aren't doing a great job. But I bet a lot of people, as I'm looking at the names here, the people letting up the chat, we have uh, psychotherapists, physiotherapists, uh, counselors, like we, th we need more of these people helping other people. So it's, it's really exciting for me to help you build an outstanding brand. Because I think my theory is when I saw the number of people that were signed up, it, it just re encouraged me that there's not a lot of people talking about this when you're starting out. Right. I, I'm thinking maybe like when you went to train, uh, you went training and maybe it was four years, maybe a, a certification, whatever program you were in. I'm, I'm thinking there's not a lot of uh, like tr training specifically for marketing and brand building. Right. Maybe there was somebody doing a lunch and learn at some point where they were offering free pizza and promoting their product or something. And you got the free pizza and that's all you really remember. But all the marketing tips and tricks, it wasn't really all that um, you know, memorable. Or maybe it was like one class in your like business development class in your training and, and maybe you slept through it or missed it. And that was it. That was like the extent of the marketing training that you got as you were uh, you know, learning to do what you do. But you soon learned that you had to do it because as a clinic owner, you were also a business owner. And as a business owner, you realize that you have to talk about what you do. So here's the sad reality about our world today is that the best clinics don't always get the new patients. Right? And it's it's like that in anything, right? The best music doesn't always get heard by the most people. Uh, the best politicians don't always get elected. The best sports teams, as a Vancouver Canucks fan, I know this well, don't always win the Stanley Cup. And so I, I realized that we have to do some work as if you're running a business. And if you're running a clinic, you know you're running a business. And so marketing is just one part of that. And part of marketing is the brand building section. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So I'm going to share my slides here and get into this. And then, you know, I'm going to have my friends monitoring the chat. If you have questions, don't hesitate to reach out um, because we have uh, Josh here and even each other. I'm sure there's a lot of, you know, collective uh, in information here in the, the Jane Brain Trust. So maybe one of your questions, uh, someone else can answer and vice versa. So we're going to work together in this on the topic of how to build an outstanding brand. Okay. And here's the, here's the cl clincher is that if you think about it, there's a lot of bad marketing going on in your city today. And maybe that's a bit of a you know sad thing. But the truth is that it's actually an opportunity that if you think about it, there's a ton of bad marketing in your city, which means that if you get this well, uh, you have the opportunity to really stand out and uh, and you can look uh, really good really quickly. Um, I just want to make sure, um, give me someone give me a little uh, heads up if we have slides. Can you guys see slides? going on here. Yeah, Ashley, can you jump on and let me know? Cause I just have a note here. That Absolutely. Not... Okay. can Perfect. see those slides, John. Yep. Beautiful. Okay. So this is the excitement I want you to feel when you think about the opportunity that if you get your brand, well, you can uh, jump ahead of people who just like you never received any formal training in marketing. And now they're into like two years, five years, 10 years. I worked with some people for 20 years. They've just kind of always had their, the same way of doing things. They've never done marketing for 20 years. You can leap so far ahead. So this is an opportunity for you, and I'm happy to talk about it. So with the right help, you can catapult your brand and impact and income so that you jump ahead faster than ever before. Uh, this is my passion. I'm not a clinician myself, but I do love helping clinic owners because, you know, I'm a patient in many cases. I've had chiropractors, massage therapists, counselors myself, and, uh, and I love doing this. So I'm one of the co-founders of clinic sites. I've been helping for over six years. And I really love this idea of, of helping people in business, whatever business you're in. It's really close to my heart that whether you, you know, if you're in website design, or if you are a lawyer, or if you're a dentist, or if you're a psychologist, we're all in the business of helping each other win our stories. And so that's what my book, Now Start With Who, is all about. In a few moments, I'm going to actually give you 
an opportunity to get it for free. Uh, Ashley has a hard copy, but I'm going to give you a digital copy for free in a moment. And then what I'm going to do today is I'm going to go through the four aspects of building a brand, okay, to launch an, a, a practice or maybe to rebrand your practice. And, and don't worry, if, you, like, if you've had a brand for a while or if you've had a clinic for a while, uh, no problem if you're redoing this. Think about all the times that Instagram has relaunched their brand or Google has relaunched their brand. We're changing logos, changing names, tweaking things all the time. So even the most established brands have to do this. So as we go through these four points, I'm going to give you the theory of it. But then at the end, what I'm going to do is if I was starting a, a, a clinic today, here's what I would do. And I'm going to start showing you how if I was doing this, I mean, I got three kids at home. I got, uh, you know, businesses. I got a life. I got to keep my health up. Like I got a lot of stuff going on. I'm going to need some help to do this quickly. And so I want to show you some of the tools that I would use to do it quickly. Some of the AI software that's available to do this in lightning speed. So you're going to love that, but you have to stick around to the end. Okay. So we'll go through the theory and then I'm just going to show you how I would do it in practice today with some of the tools that are available. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to clarify, actually, let me just clarify who craft a clear message, create your brand. Um, we got to move that resources and then crank out your marketing. So those are the four things. The first thing, of course, you already saw, I teased it, is that you need to clarify your who. For many years, I've been sharing this message that if you have a sorry, compelling- Sorry, John, John, oh, yeah. sorry to interrupt. I'm on slide one right now. Are you oh, showing dear. something different? I've had so many sorry. slides since then, Ashley. I'm sorry. We're going to try oh. that. That's what I was a little bit worried about because it was giving me some funny- uh, it was giving me some funny uh, note there. How about now? Probably not, right? Clarify your who. Yep. Perfect. Yeah, there we go. So I was a little worried that you had missed some slides. So I'm not going to go over it again, but I'll just maybe go through. This is the slide that you needed to see. Uh, clarify your who, craft the current message, create your brand resources, and then crank out your market. So those are the four things. Thank you, Ashley, for, for letting me know that. So the first one, again, we need to clarify your who. I've been saying this for a while. We need a if you have a compelling why, which many of you who are on this call already do, a why is what gets you out of bed in the morning, right? You, you climbed a mountain, you asked what you're supposed to do with your life, and you felt like you were supposed to go into this particular discipline that you're in. At least I hope that you are in it for more than just the money. But a driving why is essentially, you know, what excites us about what we want to accomplish in our life. The problem is that once you climb down the mountain or you come back into reality, you soon realize that to build the business around it, you need more people than just yourself, right? And maybe your mom, you told your mom she was all excited about your why and you told your spouse and your spouse pretended to care about your why, but you need more people than just your mom and your, your partner, right? So you have to get more people involved and that's where the who comes in. So I would say that a compelling why needs an excited who if you're going to have a really successful clinic and a who obviously could be plural. It's a bunch of people. So we want to we want to fill your practice with the right kind of people. So you think of that uh, Jane schedule that you get. Imagine if you had every single client, or we'll call them uh, patient here, uh, every single client or patient was someone that you just were so excited, right? You knew how to help them. You were confident. You were excited about that. And you're like, wow, this is really my kind of person. I can't wait for them to come. Now think of the opposite, right? Where you're you're not sure who they are. You're, you're not sure about the outcome that you can provide. You're not confident that you can get results for them. And you're actually quite uh, look, not looking forward to it. Well, how many of those can you do in a day before you start to get really tired at the end of the day? And how many of those can you do over a week or a month or a career before you're just completely burnt out and drained? So what I would rather than just you being random and trying to help everybody, uh, I would rather you fill your schedule with people that just light you up, that you get great results for, and they love talking about you with other people. So how do you do that? Well, you gotta, it doesn't come randomly. And the thing about it is that you can't always think your way into it, right? So this is a bit of an academic exercise, but there's also an art and a science to it. Like the art is that you actually have to experience your way into finding your who, but there are some ways to do it. And I want you to start thinking about even today, start thinking about if you look at your calendar today of the people that you're going to help, who do you enjoy helping the most? So you actually have fun doing it. You engage with their personality. It's exciting. Who do you love helping the most? And then with whom have you had the most success, right? Because it's not just who you like helping, but you want to get results for them. You want to know that their investment of time, energy, and dollars is actually going to you know, result in their you know, ultimate health. So you want to get results. You don't just want to be taking their money and using up all their time and, and end up getting not results. But you love hanging out with them. No, you need both. 
And thirdly, who are you passionate about helping? So you really do have to have a passion because you're not just going to do this for a week. You're going to do put a whole career into this. And so you want to be so excited about who you're helping that you just, you know, you want to just grow and build and help more people and maybe even open up more locations. So uh, you want to be passionate about it. And then you also want to understand that this is the empathy part, right? You want to be someone who connects with them on an emotional level. And so you can actually know how they're feeling or what they're feeling. And, and that's important. And fifthly, because you're not running a charity, unless you're running a charity, and if you're running a charity, that's totally fine. That money is not a part of it. But I just know that when it comes to feeding your family and paying your rent or your mortgage or paying your lease, paying your staff, you need to fill your practice uh, with people who are willing to give money for what you do. And, and that's important, right? So if you are picking a who that doesn't you know, necessarily have the means to pay you, then you got to find another way to make this happen if you're running some sort of a charity. But if you're running a business, then you really do need to make sure that your, your who, the people that you love helping, you have success with them, that you're passionate about helping them, you understand them, they also have dollars to thank you with, right? And that's how our system works is you do a great service and they thank you with dollars and both people walk away from the transaction happy. So that's kind of the five things that I would work uh, towards. And when you do that, you have now at least a clear idea. You're not trying to help everybody, but you're trying to help these kind of people. And when you start thinking about this, uh, now you're going to kind of create what's called an avatar. I talk all about that in the book. We don't have all the time to, to go through everything about how to have a niche. I just know that having studied clinics for so long, that this is the way to do it, right? If there's a way to build a business where one, you're a generalist, and two, the other option is that you have a clear who that is the way to, to build a scalable practice where you now can, not only are you passionate about it, but you know how to get great outcomes and then you can start to systematize it. And then you could teach other people your systems. And when you taught other people your systems, uh, now you're able to uh, not have to be there all the time. So it's not you doing all the work all the time. And now you can start to take vacations, time away. I mean, the summer is coming. Wouldn't it be great? Have somebody else running a thrive, your thriving practice and you just have to sit back. That would be really cool. Uh, for you to be able to teach other people how to do this, the thing that you do to help the people that you love helping and get the outcomes that they need. And it's not even all dependent on you. So uh, do feel free to, to send me that email and you'll get an instant copy right in your inbox. Okay, the next thing that we need to do is we need to create a clear message. Messaging is so important, right? Because once you've picked your people, now you need to be able to talk to them in a way that's actually engaging. Let me tell you a way that uh, most of us do it and it doesn't work. So when we meet somebody uh, for the first time, uh, we're very tempted to talk about ourselves, right? It's just when we get uncomfortable, right? You get into a networking event or, you know, you, you meet someone, it's like, oh, I'm not really great with people. That's probably a result of a bit of COVID and a bit of just our natural social anxiety. And so what do we do by default? Well, we start to talk about ourselves. And if you've ever met somebody that just talked about themselves, you probably know some people from high school, or maybe uh, you know, maybe you'll meet some this weekend, but they just love talking about themselves. How do you feel about those people? You start to slowly back away. But what happens when you find somebody that you that takes a true interest in you? I mean, this is the story of my dating, the debacle of my 20s when I was trying to date. I just realized like, uh, I'm, I'm uncomfortable here. Talk to somebody. What do I do? Well, I'll talk about my, my you know high school accomplishments, talk about the places I've traveled. Uh, B list celebrities on my phone that I've gotten pictures with, but all these things I'd go through and I realized that, you know, it, it wasn't working out that way. Finally, in my thirties matured a little bit, a guy introduced me to a gal. He said, this is a great one. Like, don't screw this one up. And so I decided I'm going to try to do an opposite approach. Instead of talking about myself the whole time, I'm going to try to take a genuine interest in, in her. So I just started asking question after question, after question, first date, tons of questions, second date, tons of questions, third date, tons of questions. And it went on and she kept wanting to, to, to see me because the principle is that interested is interesting. So when you take an interest in somebody else, you're actually uh, winning them over. And the problem is that because like meeting people, uh, marketing makes us uncomfortable at times, what we're trying to, we're, we're taking the complete wrong approach. We think, oh, I got to talk to these people. I want to talk about how important we are as part of you know, this new clinic, how exciting it is, how excited we are, maybe the awards that I've won, maybe how, how I'm different than the competitors, how I'm this, I'm this, I'm this. And all people here is just the same thing that they get from the guy that just talks about himself either on a date or at a networking event. They just hear like Charlie Brown's teacher, wah, 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 wah. They say, this person seems like a very important person, especially to themselves. 
but I don't really need them right now. I don't need someone like that. I'm looking for someone that's going to help me. So when it comes to how we connect with our who's, if you want to build a brand, you need to start thinking about words, the words that you're going to use. And I want to encourage you to move away from what I see most clinics doing. Most clinics, you talk to the clinic owner and they're like, man, I um, love my patients. I, I want to help people. And then you look at their website and it's all about them. And I can't, I couldn't, I haven't been able to figure it out still. Well, I mean, I sort of get the human nature of it. When we're uncomfortable, we have to do marketing. We have to build a website. We don't really know what to say. And so we just end up talking about ourselves in our marketing as well. And so the most clinic or sort of the most patient centric clinics are actually very clinic centric in their marketing and their, in their brand. It's all about them. And so what we want to do is we want to flip that around, that if you are patient-centric in your heart, then you need to be patient-centric in your words. And for me, that shift took an actual change in my thinking, a change in my, and how I did, uh, you know, how I approach people. And you'll have to do the same in your clinic. Uh, and as you talk about what you do, okay? So you want to talk about it instead of the, the things that you do, talk about the, the problems that you solve for other people. And that's an entirely different approach. I'm going to go through how to build that clear message because it is uh, one of the foundational uh, building blocks of um, of what we're doing. Okay, so let's go to just making sure we can see the slides again. There we go. Craft a clear message. How are you going to do that? Well, let me show you the opportunity. Imagine Elon Musk came to you and you're like, oh man, all those billions of followers. I could, I could really talk about my clinic here. And he's like, okay, what are you going to say? I'll give you one of my tweets just as a, you know, maybe you want a raffle or a charity or something. Imagine all the things. Now, you're not tweeting at Elon Musk, right? You're not talking to him. You're talking to uh, everybody, anybody, right? You have this opportunity. What are you going to say? Well, this is the moment that freezes so many of us because we don't necessarily have uh, established brand lines or slogans or headlines that we would use. Uh, we'll freeze and we'll just end up talking about ourselves. Again, missed opportunity. So here's the resources you need when you're building a brand. You need a one-liner. You need an elevator pitch. And if you're really hardcore uh, and really want to jump on this, you can actually create a brand messaging guide. I'll show you how to do that at the end of this uh, presentation. So here's how you do that. You got to think again. So when you've already figured this out, right? Now you're at, you've answered number one already. We know who our who is. We know who our ideal patient is. And then we need to start thinking about what's the problem that we solve for them. When you start talking about the problems, you start getting people interested right? Uh, it's just in, in movies, the great, the great stories that grip us for years, centuries have that, that grip uh, humans is uh, movies that uh, have a, a clear problem that needs to be solved. That's what interests us because we just generate or naturally are dr uh, drawn to problems and we want to find out the solution. That's why, you know, Netflix and Amazon Prime have figured this out when it comes to putting on little teasers at the end. And the, there's a little hook at the end of the um, show that says, this problem is not resolved yet. What should you do? Watch another one. People end up spending way too much time awake watching these movies because the problem has not been resolved. We want to see a solution to the problem. Have you ever watched the, you know, all the way binge watch something and it got to the end of the season, the problem still wasn't solved. You were so frustrated, right? It's because we are driven, we are drawn to things that, um, that, sol that solve problems. We want to know the solution. And so when we're going to start to get clear on people, we actually want to realize like there's an emotion attached to the problem as well. So we're going to think, what is the, the problem? Maybe it's pain. Maybe it's, um, you know, some sort of trauma in their life or something that's caused them uh, some sort of issue. But it's also doing something to them internally. There's a catalytic um, em emotion. So maybe it's fear. Maybe it's frustration. Maybe it's overwhelm. Maybe it's stress. Something is causing that. Okay. And then you can solve that problem. This is where you show up. So there's, there's some problem that's happened to this ideal patient of yours. It's caused us, uh, you know, a, an emotional reaction to them. And now you show up and you start showing how you can solve the problem for them to improve their life so that they can get a great outcome. Cause at the end of the day, that's what we're wanting. We are wanting outcomes. Uh, when we have problems, we want solutions so that we can have a better life. And then, you know, as we're all these characters in our stories and there's a happily ever after that people are chasing. So what happens when they get that? If you can answer these six questions, you have a strong foundation. In fact, maybe take a screenshot of this right now, because these are things that if you're going to talk about your clinic, which you are, you're going to talk about it online. You're going to talk about your clinic on social. You're going to talk about your clinic at networking events and just over the fence with neighbors or friends, wherever you go, you have an opportunity 
or an Elon Musk tweet, of course. And you have all these opportunities for the rest of the duration, the life of your clinic to, to talk about what you do. And you need to know these six questions, okay? And now we're gonna I'm gonna show you how to create a tool out of that. We're gonna do what's called the formal pitch. When are you gonna do a formal pitch? You're gonna do a formal pitch, you know, maybe when you're uh, at, an, at an event and it's a networking event of uh, maybe at your local chamber and you've gone there and it's they're going around the circle and talking about what you do, that's your opportunity is a formal pitch. You're gonna do a formal pitch in writing Maybe when you're doing a bio of your of your clinic, maybe on your website, you're going to use this as well. But it's very formal. So it's not very conversational. Informal would be, you know, a series of back and forths, asking questions, talking about it. But formal is like you get a bit of a monologue, like a website. Okay, so remember those six things. And now you're just going to fill in the blanks and you're going to actually learn how to, to pitch your um, your practice. So the first thing is, you know, too many, and then you put the people, maybe people in Vancouver feel, and then what's the emotional problem? Overwhelmed uh, because of uh, trauma in their lives, okay? So too many people in Vancouver feel trauma, uh, sorry, overwhelmed because of trauma in their lives. And then you can say that we have a, this is your process. How did you solve the problem? You know, we have a six-step framework where we have a three visit system or whatever it is. Uh, maybe it's a course that you offer that helps people overcome trauma so that they can, uh, when they do this, they can get back to, to doing the things they love or get over this pain or feel free to live again, right? That's that's one way to do it. You could do it with physical pain as well, right? Maybe too many active uh, Minnesotans feel frustrated because they can't do the things they love because of a chronic, because of chronic pain. And we have a chiropractic office that helps people move freely again, get over pain so that when they do this, they can go about their life doing the things they love again. And what I've done is I've just identified who I'm talking to, like the people that I want scheduling uh, with my Jane booking. I'm, I've addressed the problem that I solved so that whenever they, someone hears that, they're like, oh, I have that problem or I have a friend that does that. And then I've, I, I've talked about the process. We're not just going to leave people in the pro problem. We're actually going to help them. And then we're going to take them out. And this is the outcome that they're going to get because of it. And then the informal pitch comes, and they'll just do this quickly. So you could, I mean, this is when you're over the fence. Maybe you're picking up your kids from school. Somebody says, you know, we've been talking for like a whole year here, and it's finally June. What is it that you actually do for work? You could say, have you ever noticed how, you know, so many active people feel completely stressed out because, you know, of their chronic back pain? They can't do the things they love anymore. And he says, yeah, I have a brother who, so you, you kind of stop and you let the other person kind of talk and tell their story or they talk about themselves. Yeah, for the past years, we've developed, uh, you know, a, a system that helps them overcome their pain, get free from injury, get back to doing the things they love. And when they do this, they can be, you know, active again without even thinking about their injury. And so then they say, oh, that's cool. I'd love to learn more. Okay, so that's, you know, then you could basically, at that point, it's like, hey, they're they're ready for it, right? Tell them and tell them to jump onto your website and book a book an appointment right away. So that's the informal, and then we talk about the formal pitch. You need to know this because you're going to be talking about your clinic for the rest of your the well the life of the clinic at least, and your team's going to be able to do it. You're going to have to do it too. So uh, this is how we do it. This is how we talk. And now we're into now we've got the messaging, we've got the ideal uh, patient, and now we're going to start talking about the brand resources that you need. Now, you might have thought that when we were talking about how to build an outstanding brand, we were just going to talk about brand resources. By brand resources, what do I mean? I mean, your logo, your colors, your name, all that kind of stuff. But what we started with was we actually started with who is this clinic for? Because otherwise, you might create a name or colors or a logo that was all about you. And we've already established that things that are all about us do not connect. And we want to connect. We want to be the clinic that people think about when they think about the problems that they have that we solve easily. We want to be first to mind. So we want to create that human to human connection, but we don't do it. We've already established that if we're just talking about ourselves. So your logo is not about you. Your colors are not about you. Your brand name, like the name of your clinic is not even about you. Unless you want to turn people away, of course, but I want you to help more people. So we're going to look at this. We're going to look at one name one logo, two fonts, and three colors, okay? So that's what, that, those are the only resources we're going to look at, and we have to do them a little faster than I'd probably like, but hey, we can go, you can watch the replay, and you can watch it even, probably best to watch it on half speed, because I do tend to talk fast when I'm excited about a topic, 
So let's look at one name, one logo, two fonts, and three colors. All right. There's five different types of practice names. And this is an area that so many people get wrong. It kind of is like, it's one of those things. It's like, oh man, this is just low lying fruit for me to just rip people apart, but I don't want to do it. So hear me out. I want to be respectful of people that have terrible names for their clinic. But I also want to realize that there is a huge opportunity here for you to get ahead by actually getting a proper name. So the first ones are actually, the first three are, acceptable or are great the fourth one isn't isn't all that um good because it limits you and the fifth one i'm really not about uh, at all so you'll you'll figure that out so when it comes to a practice name here's one of your options to be aspirational okay as what does aspirational mean it means basically that the ideal outcome for the patient is written right into your clinic name like you know uh, healthy back chiropractic uh, strong mind counseling. Um, I, I mean, clearly I'm not making up names here right now. If I, if somebody was in front of me, put their name up there, I'd probably, I'd, I'd give you an aspirational name, right? Healthy living nutrient uh, supplements um, company, whatever it would be, right? Healthy families. Yeah. Pregnancy care, um, Abbotsford maternity clinic, something like that, right? You, you know, well, maternity wouldn't be, I'll use that different, but aspirational, something that where the outcome, the ideal outcome of the patient or, or client is right there written into the name. So when people think of healthy back uh, chiropractic, what are they going to be thinking about? They're going to be thinking, my, if my back is sore and I want a healthy back, that's where I go. Active living physiotherapy, right? If I want to be living uh, actively again, I want to go to this physiotherapy clinic because these are the kind of people who deliver that kind of outcome that I need. But the opposite is also effective too. So if healthy back chiropractic was one, then um, sore back chiropractic could be another or back pain clinic or injury clinic, right? These are the negative things, trauma centers, right? We know what kind of problem that trauma centers will um, cover. Um, uh, sore, sore teeth, <laughs> dent, dental care or something, right? Um, we know what they do because the problem that they solve is right there. So when I have that problem, the first thing place I'll go is to the, the place with the name, okay? Um, same with body parts, right? So body parts, the, uh, the joint is a very popular uh, chiropractic chain all across America. Uh, we, we know if you have sore joints, if you have problems with your joints, the joint is the kind of place. So they've just literally taken... Uh, all the joints and claim them for our, themselves, right? Uh, and that's what you can do. So foot care would be another one of these, right? If you're a foot care place, you can just pick the feet because people know like, if they have a headache, well, maybe, I mean, prove me wrong here that if you go to a foot care place, it can solve headaches. I'm sure all the foot care people are letting out the chat saying, you don't know what we even do. I bet you can solve headaches, especially the headache of having uh, sore feet, Okay. So, uh, but I'm, I'm probably going to, if I have foot pain, I'm going to go to a foot pain clinic and at least I know what they do. So I don't have to think too much about it. Okay. So body parts is another really great opportunity for you to be clear in who your um, clinic is all about helping. And now there we'll get to the, the questionable ones. The fourth one is the regional one. Hey, when it comes to regional, what we're doing is we're picking an area and then talking about your services. So uh, we're going to say, let's say like um, Seattle physical therapy. Okay, so physical therapy in Seattle, we're just going to call it Seattle physical therapy. Totally okay. Uh, however, the, the limitation is if you have aspirations outside of Seattle, let's say you want to become a statewide um, uh, statewide practice. Now, all of a sudden, if you start building in Bellingham or if you start building in, you know, Vancouver, Washington, this is going to be a bit of a challenge for you because you're, you've named your location based on the region that you're in. There's no opportunity to grow. So that this is going to be a problem for you. Okay. So especially if you pick a really small area, like a street, a lot of times people will pick a street and then they want to build a second location, but now their name of their practice is confined to the street that they're on. So now you have to tell Google, like, actually, we have multiple locations, but we're still named after the street. So be careful how you choose a name. Do not choose a name too flippantly if you have aspirations to get bigger. You could tell why an aspirational name might be more appealing because you can actually reach on a national level if you'd like, okay? Or certainly a statewide or, or province-wide level. So regional names are a little bit, you know, it's good for your SEO maybe because you actually have the service and the 
you know, the area in, in the name. However, it really limits you when it comes to growth. And then fifth and finally is the ego and legacy. And what is this all about? Well, this is about you, right? So if you want to call yourself Smith Physiotherapy or Smith Massage Therapy or what, what like uh, this, ha maybe in the 80s, they used to do this more. I don't see it as often, but I still see it happening. And what's going to happen is your, um, your practice name is going to be, um, is going to be exclusive to you and to your legacy. Now, the problem with that is, um, you know, if you're Dr. Smith, that's fine. But what if somebody else wants to come and buy that? I've, I have the story of a friend uh, who uh, he bought a clinic and it was one of those ego and legacy names that now he, for the last, I think it's like gotta be seven years now, has been under the shadow of this guy who doesn't even practice in town, doesn't even live in town anymore. He built up a, you know, a great practice. It was purchased, but now my friend Andrew has to live under his shadow for as long as it takes for the excruciatingly painful process of changing your name. So you got to change your, your name on Google. You got to change your logo. You got to change your signage. You got to change, you know, the people calling in saying, is this old name, ego and legacy chiropractic? Right? You have to say, no, it's not uh, new management, new owners. Okay. Thank you. Right. Total pain in the butt. And I said to him, like, when you buy the, when you bought the practice, what you should have done is taken, you know, $25,000 off the sticker price and said, it's going to take me $25,000 worth of time and energy and money to re to change this thing over, to rebrand it all to my name or some other name. He said, John, 25 is way too small. It's more like four times that. It's like a hundred grand that I should have taken because of the pain that it would have, that it's going to cause me to, um, to change the name. So I am not a big fan of ego and legacy. Okay. Here's a few examples of just like, you can tell what these people do, right? Um, so if it has like chiropractic and sports medicine or spine and strength or accident and injury clinic, uh, premier rehab, you know, the kind of stuff that they do there. Okay. I'm going to talk a little bit about logos. I'm not like logos is one of the things that people tend to start with. And I've got it like buried deep into my notes because I really don't care all that much about logos, to be honest with you. Um, I think maybe your ego cares about logos because that's what you want to represent you, but people don't really care. And, and I used the example earlier that Think about how many times Google or Instagram or Facebook have changed their logo. Um, and so if they're doing it, then logos can can evolve, they can shift. And so it's it's not nearly as important as having your ideal patient and having a message that's clear and knowing that, you know, this is not about you. So there's a few places. If you're on a budget, I would go with Canva. You can make a free logo today. If you want to pay a, um, a little bit more, you can hire somebody uh, on Fiverr, usually around between $50 to $200. You'll find a really nice person building a logo there, but it is going to be generic and they're going to do it quickly and they're not going to work with you all that closely, but you will get a logo out of it. Uh, 99 Designs is a fun one. It's kind of gamifying it. My brother really loves this um, with this logo design. I just want to, you know, he he gets credit for finding this. Basically, it's like um, you have a competition. You give out a certain amount of money as the prize reward and people bid on it, or at least they they submit something. And then you can actually ask your friends, family, even maybe patients. Hey, which one do you like the best? So that it's not just about you. And um, so 99 design is kind of fun. It's a, it's a, it's a little more. Uh, you, you're probably going to spend maybe a thousand bucks and and more than that, but you'll get, a, it'll be a fun process to actually have like, go from like 30 designs to take it down to five. Then you can have a vote, see what people, how people are responding. And that's, it, you know, that might be more fun and certainly a way to engage your followers on social media a little bit more. And this last uh, handsome looking fellow there, that's just, you know, your nephew or your uncle or a local vendor, or maybe even a patient, you could do um, a swap of services, but somebody that you can have build it for you, you might know somebody, but uh, that's, those are your kind of options. And then you just take it and, and that becomes your, your logo. When it comes to colors, uh, I would say have three to four colors. You want to have a main color. And you want to have a secondary and a tertiary, and then your fourth color that you're sort of using, but you're more sprinkling it in. So your primary color is the one you're going to be mostly known for. And then the secondary and uh, tertiary one, you're going to kind of just use a bit. And the fourth one, you'll use just every once in a while. Um, but there's so many different color palette options. Uh, you can pick your favorite, or you can ask a friend to pick it if you're colorblind or you're like me, you can't, don't do well putting colors together. Um, I get sent back to my room mo many mornings because my colors don't uh, work together that day. So I'm not the best to be doing this, but uh, you could also pick your favorite sports team, right? Even a local sports team and just rip off their colors because they've paid like thousands of dollars to a consultant, right? To, 
um, to to pick the right the colors that work. And so you can just mooch off their work, and you know that the people locally already identify with those colors. So you can just pick those, or go to what's called Canva Color Picker, or you can just Google it. But there's lots of uh, color picker options out there, and you just find the one that not not that you think is best, but that other people will think is best, right? And so you're going to have to make a call. That's kind of why I like 99 designs a lot is because it actually opens it up to hearing from other people who um, may think or see the world differently than you do. And again, if the, if the clinic is not about you, then you don't want it just to be you picking what you like best. You want to find what your patient or client base will think is best. And so engage them with that. One of the time, one of the best questions that you can ask them when you're going through this is what would you like in your coffee? And the reason why I say it is because it it shows that you're having a conversation with them and that you can listen to what they think, what they find appealing. Because again, even the colors, like the clinic, is not about you. It's about them. All right, we, we're we getting pretty far here. We're, we're doing really well. Uh, and, and now we're on to the fourth thing, which is to crank out your marketing. And this is where you get the work done, right? So you've you've got the fun stuff of, you know, some of the theory of of who your clinic is for. You're thinking about the messaging, how you're going to engage them, the problem you solve, the way you're going to solve the problem, and uh, and the outcome that you deliver. And then you've got your logo and your colors in place. Now we're actually going to do the stuff that we think about when we think about marketing, which is we're going to start thinking about your website and how you engage on social. And, you know, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about funnels. But when it comes to marketing, I want to just talk about this, this principle. And I've used this before on a Jane webinar, so you can tune out or, or dial in here for a little bit of an update. Oh, but this is the first time. I think this quadrant is super, is super important when it comes to how you apply all this stuff. Uh, think of these four things. Your website, we'll just focus on because it's, you know, but you're, I mean, it could be good for, for social media or anything that you create. But you want to have these four elements, right? Modern design, clear message, Google friendly, and easy to update, right? The technology has to be easy to update. This is one of the reasons why I love clinic sites so much is because it's not confusing to, to make changes to your website. And so it has to be easy to update. Why do you need all four of these? I'll just briefly go over that. What happens if you have a good message? It's Google friendly. Your website's easy to update, but it hasn't been like, you, you haven't updated it at all it's since like 20, 15, 10 years, maybe five years. Heck, maybe in, since COVID, right? There's still people wearing masks and there's COVID protocols all over your site. Right, and uh, it's just it started to look quite dated. The web has changed, evolved over the many years, and your website is static and it's not going anywhere. What's going to happen? Well, people are going to judge you, just like we judge people by the clothes they wear, and we judge authors by the book, the cover of their books. I mean, this isn't good of us. This is the 21st century. We shouldn't be doing this. We still are doing it, though. We're still judging people by their clothes, and we're still judging people or uh, books by their covers, and we're still judging clinics by their website. And you do this with other places, but it also could happen to you. And so people will make a first impression. If they show up on your website and it looks dated or just thrown together and doesn't look great, this is going to be a huge problem for you um, because uh, they're going to make a, a impression. Say, if this person doesn't care about their website, why should I trust them with my back? Or why should I trust them with my injury? Why should I trust them with my trauma? Why should I trust them with my teeth? Whatever it is. They're going to make a judgment of you based on your website. Whether it's fair or not, it doesn't matter. It's just people are people and people are going to be people. All right. So let's say you do get the modern design, but you don't go through the um, what we talked about before with the uh, with the messaging, right? Your words are just all about you and, you know, uh, it, maybe it's unclear. Maybe it's full of like multi-syllable words that you grabbed right out of your textbook from school and people just don't understand that. What's going to happen? Well, they're going to be confused. The confused mind never goes forward. The confused mind never books appointments. And if your word is words on your website or your words in your pitch or whatever it is, are, it confuses people, they're not going to know what to do. Right, Matt, remember that text that you got from somebody that you ghosted them for about two weeks and they replied back and they're like, hey, you didn't respond to my text. If you look back, I bet you were confused. The, you know, we, we don't respond to texts that confuse us. And so we just freeze and we let it go. It's the same with websites. Uh, we don't, if we don't know what to do, we won't move forward. And so if you have confusion on your website, cause you don't have a clear message uh, and, and good words and simple words that talk to the ideal patient, you're going to have uh, confused people that don't move forward. 
There's also this Google factor too, right? SEO is a huge thing. I've seen lots of great webinars from the Jane community on, on SEO and there's lots of resources out there, but search engine optimization basically means that you're playing, excuse me, you're playing Google's game. And what Google wants to do is provide simple information to people who are looking for it. It wants to answer questions that people are asking and it's going to use the collective work of the, the internet to, um, to answer those questions. And so when people are looking for you, you want to be the one to, to show up. And so if you don't, if you don't do anything for SEO, there's a chance that online you'll be very lonely. Right? You'll have this beautiful website full, with a clear message, but no one's going to show up because Google's not sending any traffic to you. So you want to have some kind of SEO work done. Now, this is a Pandora's box that I just opened up because you can pay anything from nothing to thousands of dollars a month to, to try to uh, rank better on Google. Plus, with the rise of AI, things are changing, but uh, I, I just want to park the SEO conversation uh, for another day and say that it's important. And if you don't do anything, you're going to be lonely, but you can also lose sleep over this. And the people that SEO get SEO obsessed are, you know, they don't get invited to parties anymore. And they certainly don't get invited uh, to um, <laughs> to marketing parties because they're so annoying. All they want to do is talk about SEO. Uh, we don't want that for you. And we want you to be Google friendly, but not Google obsessed. Okay. The best way to get patients, the best way to get new patients through your door, a steady stream of people that love Booking with you is to have a clear who and have those who's uh, so excited about the problem you solve and this process you do and the outcome that you deliver. And, and they're so super thrilled about that, that they just happily refer people to you, people just like them. Referrals are still the, the gold standard of getting bookings. Google is just kind of icing on the cake. It's a bonus. It's something you thrown in. Okay. So that's my, my rant about SEO people is that don't be obsessed about it. It's a great tool. Um, but referrals are still the gold standard when it comes to filling your client base, um, filling your calendar with uh, with who's that you love and that they love you. So finally, if we're if we're not updating our site, it's going to slowly get dated. I was saying this for years, and then this pandemic happened. I don't know in Vancouver it was is pretty big. Everything got shut down. Wherever you're from, uh, you know maybe you had COVID nineteen influence at some point. But I know that um, I was saying for a lot of time that we need to be able to update our sites. And then COVID hit. And many people couldn't uh, couldn't change their website. They they were stuck. They couldn't put any notifications on there. They couldn't change their hours. They couldn't change the picture. So it still looked like you know everything was pre-COVID days, and that was really tough. You know they tried to get a hold of their web designer that who made their site many years ago, and they the guy wasn't picking up the phone or maybe uh, had gone out of business or maybe had COVID. Who knows? But if you're not able to make easy update, quick updates to your website, if it's not easy to manage yourself, you're in for years of pain right? Web designers don't have the best reputations in uh, in the marketplace. And uh, and whether that's justified or not is another conversation as well. But what's best is that you have your website built on simple technology that's easy to build and manage a site yourself, especially when you're starting out and you're on a budget. So we don't want a dated website. You want, well, that's a dead a dated website turns into a dead website pretty quick. But you want to have all these things on a website that you can build yourself. And again, that's one of the reasons why I love clinic sites. And you can get started right away if you want to build a website. The good thing about clinic sites is that it actually syncs up with Jane. And so a lot of the information that you build into your Jane account actually goes automatically to your website, like your staff members, your location, uh, your even your Jane booking link, that clear, that clear um, button is there all over the place. When it comes to website, um, even still, like just look at the screen here beside me. Like, what what do you notice the most of that uh, of that website there? That <laughs> that slowly pixelated website um, is the green buttons, right? Those two buttons will go to Jane. When I build websites, I tell people, especially when they're Jane clients. <laughs> I mean, I don't tell non-Jane clients this, but I say you should get a Jane link because it makes it so much easier for people to book appointments with you. But notice that schedule appointment is those two green buttons. When I am on this website, I'm drawn to the fact that I can get better, faster, and still stay healthier longer if I can just schedule an appointment. That's the call to action. But when it comes to actually the, the skeleton of the website or the structure of the website, I'm going to say there's six pages that you need to have a great site when you're starting out. The first one is your homepage. That's where 90% of the traffic is going to start and end. We have the results from all our clients across the industries and 80 to 90%. Um, of traffic is there. Uh, I would say it's more like 90, where people will get a first impression, they'll scroll down, they'll find all the information, whether they accept or reject, but they don't tend to get closer. Um, they don't They don't go further, but some do. And they want to know like, okay, this place looks great. 
seems like they're the service that I'm looking for, but I want to learn more about who they are. And so they go to the about page. Now the about page we think is about us. It's not even about us. The second most visited page is, is the about page, but the about page even is about why you can help other people. So it's about empathy, why you understand what they're struggling with. And then it's about authority, why you can solve the problem. So here's where you talk about the school that you went to, you know, the extra CE credits that you have or the programs that you're in, that your extra certifications or whatever it is that you do, you put those on the about page because they establish trust and a connection with you and the other person. Also put your hobbies and stuff because people that are skiers will tend to love other skiers. Conditions pages is about the, the, the problems that you solve. Maybe you don't call them conditions, whatever you call them. Uh, this is, you know, talking about, you know, just talking about problems. People that if you can articulate their problem and diagnose their problem, then they will trust you more. Show that you are an industry expert. You understand the problems that you solve. And then the services are the things that you do, right? These are the, the things, like if they want to research more about how you help them, this is a great place for your videos to maybe give some instruction or some, uh, you know, demystify your process. That's where you can put on your services. And of course, your contact page is important. But if you're a Jane user, contact page isn't as important as getting to Jane because Jane will give them all that information. And then a blog just really shows that you are answering uh, questions that are timely. It's up to date. And also blogs are good for, you know, showing Google that you can uh, engage with conversations that people are asking Google in the present day. Okay. We're almost done here. You guys have been so good. And we're still, I'm still excited to see so many of you are, are engaged still. Uh, I'm just going to go over a few questions that I get often. Should I build myself or hire? Really depends on your level of, um, of technical abilities. Uh, you can outsource your social media. You can outsource your writing. You can outsource your building. It really depends on your time and your technical expertise. Imagine like we're talking to so many people, uh, the love, the, the spectrum of technical abilities. So you got to know yourself. And then if you're not going to do it, if you're going to do it yourself, you got to spend your time. If you're not going to do it yourself, you got to spend money unless you can find some sort of volunteer, like, but you got to be willing to <laughs> sacrifice some quality. So should I build myself for hire? It really, do, you know yourself better than anyone else. If you want to give more of your time and try, uh, I would probably recommend that to start. And then if you get stuck, then ask someone else to build it. But uh, one of the reasons why I love clinic sites so much is because we've really empowered people, even with low technical abilities, to be able to do it themselves. Uh, what budget should I uh, invest? Uh, it, it really depends on you and what, uh, what, what you have um, to invest. And we want to not just make it uh, spend, but uh, like actual like investment. So you know, you should want a 10x return on what you put into your marketing. How do I pick a domain? I would say find a domain really that's close to your name. Uh, you can pick many kinds of domains, like your service and your location. So like, you know, chiropractor, Vancouver, massage therapist in Toronto or whatever it is. Um, but I would probably, because your domain is going to last with you for life, it's going to go with you uh, even on your email address. Just choose the name of your, your practice or your clinic and use that probably to be safe. What do I need about SEO? Well, you, <laughs> that's a deeper question that we have time for. Uh, if we had more time, probably we could talk a little bit about it, but uh, just know that you got to play Google's game, right? You have to play, you have to show up where Google, um, sorry, figure out what Google wants, which is to um, serve its people, serve its users. And, and that's how you do it. All right. So that's good. Well, that's a lot of questions. That's a lot of material. We've looked at, if you want to launch an outstanding practice, you've got to clarify who the clinic is for. It's not for you. It's for other people. Uh, you got to craft a, craft a clear message. You got to create brand resources and for crank out your marketing. All right, I'm going to pause here and hand it over to Ashley for a few minutes. And then if, if we still have some time, uh, what I'm going to do is kind of share how I would do it if I was building a brand myself. So Ashley, uh, what have you uh, what have you been finding as we've been talking here? Uh, John, thank you. Yeah, and before I, before I start to comment, I just want to encourage anybody who is watching that has questions that we can share with you to just drop them into the chat and then, uh, then I'll try to collect those as well. Um, a couple of things landed for me and I just like, I don't want to call these out. So one, um, I really like is like this idea of having a clear who, like the path to having people refer your business so you have future business is actually mm -hmm. talking to the right people and I think the opposite is true that you can imagine if you're if you're serving the, the wrong people just because you want to get anybody in the door mm -hmm. how well will they represent your service in the market right so I think I think that's I think starting with who just lands 
really quickly for me. I also like the statement, a confused mind never, never books. Right. Um, where did, where, where did that come from? Like, what is that based well, on? It, it came from, oh, I got to give a shout out to, um, to Don Miller, who wrote a book called Building a Story Brand. I'm a story brand certified guide, which means what? essentially I read a book and I was like, this book is game changer for me, how I do business. And then I'm like, I can help other people. So I could write the book myself or I could refer people to the book, but Building a Story Brand is a great book. And so he talks about how when people are confused, uh, their brain will just shut off. And, you know, if you've ever heard of confusing story or been in a confusing lecture, maybe even very recently for some people on, uh, today on the webinar, but you're just going to gloss over and the brain actually compensates by daydreaming. So you start thinking about other things. And, um, and, and then if you've ever gotten a text, like I use that example, right? If you ever gotten a text and you just like, I, I don't know what to do, ghost, you're going to ghost them because the confused mind never texts. And if you ever been to a website where you're like, I thought like it was a good, it was a good Facebook ad, but I have no idea what they do. Or if you've been to a chiropractor website or a physiotherapist or massage therapy or a counseling website, and you're like, I don't really know what they do or how they can help me or if they can solve my problem, the confused mind, it never buys, it never books and it never texts back. So uh, confusion is co so costly, which is why when we talk about building a brand, we have to start with the foundation of who are you for, how do you talk to them, and then start building out, you know, start talking to people on social. Now build out your, your pitch. Now you build out your website. But it starts with a foundation of I know who I'm reaching, and I know how to talk to them, and now I go and do the hard work of building all the resources. In, uh, in design thinking, there's sort of an approach to ask your customers what they want. And you right. do that through lots of different types of questions. Is there a way that 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 clinic and practice owners could apply that concept of design thinking as they're trying to develop their brand that that would right. be really lo low low lift? Yeah, especially I mean I really had compassion for the person who's just getting started. So you haven't even opened your clinic yet or you're just getting you, you know you just had your first year or something. Um talking to people would be so important. And you can get away with it when you're young, right? Like well, when you're just starting. Uh, you can say like, hey, what do you think about this? Like, I, I'm you, you make yourself vulnerable because you don't want to pretend like you're the expert right away or else you're going to miss, you're going to have a block between you and your patients. But they would love to help you, especially, you know, even friends and family and neighbors and stuff. Like, just show them like, here's what I'm thinking. Here's what I'm doing. Does this logo resonate with you? Does this, um, do these colors, do you like them or whatever? Do you like this website that we're just building out? You know, show them the, the staging link or, all that kind of stuff, like be vulnerable with people, especially in the early stage. And then if you're going, like, you can get away with it. If you are taking over a clinic, you can say, Hey, these guys built this. We're trying to build this. What do you think about this new branding that we're going to introduce? And they're like, wow, you would trust me with that. Or, you know, Hey, we're rebranding. It's just like, maybe it's you, maybe you built the old brand and you're trying to go new. Like, what do you think about these new colors or this new logo or this new website? Like you just invite people into your story. And I think they're going to be most people are, are quite good about that, but it does take some vulnerability to say what we're doing is, is changing and we're introducing something new. I think new is cool. New is moving. New is, is innovation. And I think, yeah, Ashley, great point that people would love to help you, I think, if you ask them. Uh, okay, so before I dive into a couple of questions that I'm seeing in the chat, John, I, I, I wonder if you just spend a moment to explain a little bit more about clinic sites. You did have a slide there. Just wondering about you know, maybe you can describe a bit more about well, I how would it say, relates to Jane. Yeah, I would. I mean, everything about Clinic Sites is available on um, ClinicSites.co. I would just welcome people to go out. First of all, take a look at the website, and and secondly, to try it themselves. Because the good thing is that it's it's unlimited. You can just turn it on, uh, and you can enter your Jane link. And like I said, actually, Clinic Sites listens to Jane, and uh, when you've put in your logo, your colors, your um, you know your practice name, your Jane booking link your staff members, your location, your contact information, it all comes over to clinic sites. And uh, so I'd say 85% of the work, at least that that really administrative work is already done. Even your services, I should say, are even brought over. And all the Jane act, uh, links are all actively working as soon as you give it your Jane link. And then you just uh, can play around with some of the stuff that I'll show you in a, in a few moments here of uh, some of the customizations like you know uh, your messaging. Uh, that's stuff that's unique to your practice. Uh, and then your mess, you know, your just a few tweaks and stuff. So I would just encourage people to 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 open up clinic sites and just try it out because you're not going to get ever charged until the day that you launch. 
as soon as you launch it, it's going to be $39 a month. I think that's one of the best investments you can make because it's like your website is your driver of your, of what people think about your practice, right? Before they ever walk to the doors of your practice, they're going to um, go to your website first. So um, it's a worthwhile investment. So for $39 a month, you get the website itself, you get the Jane integration, you get it protected. So we're going to actually protect the site with SSL encryption. Uh, so you don't have to pay that as an extra fee. That's usually a, an extra fee that hits people is you want to have a secure site. You certainly don't want an insecure site. Right? We have enough insecure things around. Um, so you want a secure site. And um, and then you get my friend Josh who, who and this, uh, the clinic site support team, who is the best kept secret on the internet right now. If you look at clinic sites, um, if you look at clinic sites, Google reviews, this is humble for me because we were a part of building out, you know, the Jane integration, and everything. What what do most people love about our website building company? The support team. That's all they talk about. Five stars for yay for the support team, yay for Josh. And I mean, it's good for me because I love Josh and and the team. But it's hilarious to me that we built a website building software, and all people want is the customer service, and they just love the fact that when they reach out to somebody. They're actually going to get a human being who cares about them, who knows them, and wants to help them overcome that problem that they're facing. So uh, I just, I, I, I think it's hilarious to me. But the fact that there's a human on the other end that knows clinics, that, that you know, that knows Jane and uh, is on the team, I think really helps. So I could show you slides, but I have shown so many slides. I'd rather just talk about yeah. why I love clinic sites so much because of the, <laughs> uh, I, I, I feel like we're Jane's, you know, uh, sister in that way that uh, we really, brother, sister, what well, doesn't really matter. Uh, we're there to help um, and make it as easy as possible to get an outstanding brand. Yeah, you know, one. I mean, I will say the thing that I love most about Phoenix Sites is that uh, um, most of us spend every day in Jane. We know our login, we know how to get into Jane, but nobody spends every day in their website. So, you know, what's right. my email address? What's my login? Where do I go to even make a change on the on on a website? And so, I think what's lovely here is you can make a change in your Jane account, and it can appear on your website in right. real time. Right? You just press a button, and it's it goes over. Yeah. So, uh, wow, that's easy. Okay, um, so a couple of questions here. Um, so, one is some is someone's asking about a virtual practice, and if there's a, a best practice, if there are best practices for marketing on the virtual side versus something that that is that is live or in person. Hey, can you explain that one more time? The vir virtuous? Oh, virtual? Oh, virtual, yeah. So they're probably delivering service just like this. So they're not necessarily in person. Oh, uh, even more important to have a really good website, right? Because it's so much of your uh, interaction is, the, or the first impressions, they, uh, they, it doesn't really matter if they meet you in person. They won't, they won't walk by on their way to get groceries or whatever. So you have to be so much stronger on social and you have to be strong on your website. And uh, the way to do that is to just show that you solve problems. I think if one if people can take one thing, it's be known for being a problem solver. And then when when people hear, oh, this person solves this problem or this clinic solves this problem, they put that problem in the Rolodex of their mind. And then whenever they hear someone with that problem, they say, you got to check out this place or this person. They're the best. So virtually, uh, way more important for you to be strong um, in your in your online marketing um, and and how you show up online, like. On social and stuff and it does see, it seems to me that there's a reason why you're virtual right so i think it's also explaining why that's right. valuable so right that's oh, for yes, you yeah or for your clients or patients right so i think the idea here is that it's it's actually part of the value that you're bringing to market so we want to make yeah. sure that we call that out so yeah, yeah and sense. learning to market right, too right so you don't just say oh we're virtual because it's great for me with my lifestyle i've got kids i like to be there for drop off and stuff i it's flexible for my schedule it's like mm, uh, that's not why you talk about what you do it's like no virtual is good for you because you get to do it from home it's comfortable you don't have to leave you don't have to park you don't have to pay for gas uh you know we just show up in your area just as you are you don't have to dress up you don't have to wear pants right like all the, those are the reasons how you present your virtual offering not it's great for me and this is why i love it so much so maybe yeah. that's obvious, maybe not. Okay, so Stuart's asking, if you have an existing successful clinic, is it smart to piggyback a new one with different services under the same name, brand, or to start fresh with a new, more targeted brand strategy for the who niche? Oh, <clears throat> well, we'd have to figure out a little bit more about what Stuart's doing, but I would imagine to franchise your existing brand would be a lot easier um, and then offer some different services, maybe sh maybe show why you're similar, but different. 
Um, if it, I mean, it depends on how well known you are, right? Like if Coca-Cola was to start a new brand, um, they'd probably want to leverage the Coca-Cola brand. Same with Nike. If they're going to launch a new shoe, they're probably going to want to use the Nike uh, logo. So how big are you would be the question I would ask. And, and then using that, I mean, it, it's really nice to have all the same colors and the same logo and the same business cards and stuff. So that's helpful. Um, but if, if it's totally different, right, you're going from one, one totally different discipline to another, you probably might want to rebrand just to avoid confusion, right? If you've got a picture of a spine in your logo, but now you offer virtual um, healthcare or prescriptions or something, that's going to be totally different, right? So uh sonia's asking can you elaborate on the interested is interesting point how do you avoid talking all about yourself in advertisements when it's in a unidirectional interaction yeah you just show um you use words like uh, i understand how how frustrating it is to go through this you know to i use the word trauma a lot or to have difficult experiences that you can't get over or have an injury that's just not going away it just shows that you connect right or even like we always say like, you know, too many and, and then the the clinic owner or sorry, the, the customer, the patient struggle with this, right? Just you got to, you got to land in people's life. Why are they on a, why are they on a physiotherapy website? Well, they're probably on it because they, they need to find a physiotherapist. They've been injured. They got hurt at work. They got hurt at play. You know, they're sore. They can't do the things they love. They're not coming on a sunny day when everything's great. They're going there because there's something wrong in their life and you have to hit, talk to them on that level. And, and then show that you are, you can solve the problem. So then it's okay to talk about yourself, but you're not just talking about random things. You're talking about why you're qualified to solve the problem and, and why it, you actually do care about helping them. So it's, it's flipping it and thinking, how would I want to be talked to? I don't want to just come and learn about the doctor. I want to, I want to connect that this doctor can help me because this doctor will know me. And if I'm going to invest all my time and energy and driving and all that to get there, I want to make sure it works. That's why I'm going to trust the person who connects with me the most. Thanks, John. Uh, and then Robert in the Q&A asks, so what do you do if you've already named your private practice after yourself and you don't have the money to change everything? Oh, boy. So Robert's a great example of why we shouldn't do it, right? Because he realizes he needs to change because Robert has to retire one day and or sell the practice one day or even grow the practice. So I, Robert, sorry if I, it sounds like I'm twisting the knife a bit here. I just really want to, to say like, this is really, it's really tough. It's also hard to get an associate excited about your last name. So now we know that that's the problem. How would you go about doing it? I'd say you got to rip the bandaid off as soon as possible. Um, changing a name is, is sort of free. There's a bit of a cost in that it costs you time. And, uh, but I mean, there's the, the expensive ways to hire like a world-class marketing agency to help you. The, the cheap way is to do it yourself and then just, stumble through it you got to change your google listing you got to change your signage you got to change your business card um and those all can be done very cheaply it's just ed going into your google and doing it or just you know painting over the name the existing name and uh changing your website a bit i mean hopefully you can you can diy that process it's just going to be a bit more cumbersome maybe a bit slower uh, but at least you see like it has to be done so you can wait next year you can wait 10 more years but at some point, it's going to have to be done if you want to pass it off to somebody else. Okay. So, John, and I hope somebody that's time, buying it isn't watching this because they're going to take twenty thousand or a hundred thousand dollars off the price. So, <laughs> sorry about that, Robert. Uh, John, just in the interest of time, I think we'll ask you to dive into the tools you're going to show us a little bit about how to what yes. you would do right now if you're just starting up. Yeah. So it would be a shame for me to to give p busy people all this advice, knowing full well that if I'm asking them to do this in like, you know, a hundred hours or something, like it's not going to happen. Or if it was like super expensive, they're not going to do it. So I have great compassion on the person that's so like, oh, I got to build this out. But maybe they're, they're feeling like, how am I going to do it in a way that's quick? Because I totally get that. That's me as well. Okay. So here's what I've got. I created this tool called Brand Message AI, where you let the AI do all the work. Okay. And so what we're going to do is we're going to just let uh, artificial intelligence that knows so much already. Uh, is this, is that the screen that's on here, Ashley? No, I've got to effectively launch. <laughs> okay, so there we go. We're going to have to re we're going to redo it. Okay, there we go. Now it is. Awesome. Thank okay, you. so this is a little tool that we made here called Brand Message AI, and I'm going to yada 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 a little bit of it, but I think it's going to help a lot of people if I had to do it. So you go to Brand Message AI, and the first thing it's going to ask you is, "What's your company name?" You're going to tell it. 
And then it's going to say, how do you describe what you do? Well, we provide, let's say, massage therapy and supplements to busy Vancouverites. You know, massage therapy Vancouver, that's probably what they're going to do. Who's your target audience? Well, they found that they really target active men and women aged 30 to 35. So it's kind of asking about your who. You've already done the work of that. And that's going to say, what problem does your business solve for its customers? We relieve muscle soreness and stress. And then what products or services do you offer to solve those? This is where you just talk about what you do. Three things, massage therapy, active release, functional rehab. If you can answer these five questions, which anybody at this point should be able to do this. In fact, even if you didn't before the call, you probably had a good idea. The, the, the AI can do so much work for you. In fact, what it's going to do, as soon as you hit that, it's going to spit up this idea. And if you've read Building a Story Brand, you're going to know this is the framework that the author asked for us. So it's going to kind of give you this brand messaging guide. So remember, you started with your who, and then and this is who you've got. Okay, so the problem, um, the problem here, we're going to look at the top right, the problem keeping people from, from coming to you or sorry, from, from living a great active life is that their busy schedules leave them little time for self-care. It creates frustration and decreased performance and daily activities. And uh, the physical problem, sorry, philosophical is that we believe in the importance of prioritizing self-care and embracing a pain-free lifestyle. So that's the driving why. Then they meet you. So anyway, I don't have time to go through all this, but I would like, this is all free. This is a free tool. But then there's this interesting teaser, which is going to get you very far. So you scroll down and for $99, um, it's going to show you that you can actually fill this in so that's, you know, there is a paywall here and, you know, we have, it's going to cost us to, to do all this. So what's going to happen It's going to give you your pitch right away. Too many active Vancouverites struggle with muscle soreness and stress because of busy schedules. We offer expert massage therapy and supplements so they can relieve pain and feel their best. If you want to experience a pain-free lifestyle, schedule an appointment with us. Literally just robot wrote that. And then some headline ideas. So this is like Elon Musk gives you uh, a tweet. You can put some of this stuff in there or your Social media, you want to, you know, you need a tagline or your your um, email signature. And then this is the gold standard for me if I'm going to build out my marketing is actually the, the AI is going to give you an entire uh, homepage full of copy. And then what I would do is I would just take that copy and then I would just go to clinic sites and just copy and paste everything here right into um, right onto the um, website. And then the website can be done literally within half an hour. My brother, when he's on calls with people, he literally will help them build a website in, in half an hour of time. So that I would go over to clinic sites and I would click the button that says start a site. And then I would just start and um, I could actually show you how we do it. But we, I mean, I want to be aware of time, but uh, I am aware that we can probably just take three minutes just to kind of show you how, um, how it can be done. So I need to get my Google Chrome. All right, so that everything that I just showed you, like I literally just did it. So this is it, right? This is you saw that screen, and this is this is all that stuff that it gave me, right? Okay, so I would just take this, say goodbye to pain, and um, and discomfort with expert massage therapy in Vancouver, and I would go over to my Jane link. Live demos are great, aren't they? <laughs> I would just put put it in there, and then I would go grab the sub headline because I know it does that. You might have to watch, people might have to watch the recording to see how we're doing this. But anyway, so there is my headline and sub headline. And I've got that all. And then even the book now button already works with the Jane account, right? So it's all synced up with the Jane demo clinic. And, um, and then I just can scroll down. I would just grab the next part here. So, you know, this is what the, a computer wrote. If you, or a robot, if you want to change this, like obviously it needs to be tweaked a little bit. Um, let's try, let's grab this part here. I want to make it into a new sentence. So the sentences aren't too long. And then I'm going to grab the next part and I'm going to put it in here to me, actually, when I figured this out, like when we could like, Hey, I could do so much of the work. I was like, Oh, this is going to help people with so much to save so much time. Um, so anyways, uh, this, let's just take, I'm just going to geek out a little bit for a second here. I'm not happy with the opacity on that. There we go. Yeah, so John, just while you're doing that, I mean, you're mentioning AI. And I think one of the things that um, are to answer some questions that came up. So people were, someone asked uh, what two fonts go together. And oh, I actually right. think, yes, great so question. There's a question there, right? So tell, show us what we can do there. But also I think you can, you can ask an AI, right? You can actually say, Hey, totally. listen, what, what, what are complementary fonts that I should work together around yeah. my website? 
Yeah, I, sorry. I, in the presentation, I realized I totally skipped that part about the fonts. Yeah. So the reason why I'm thinking that is because when this is when we're building the site, um, there's a whole bunch of different kind of fonts in here. So Montserrat is a pretty popular one. Lato is a nice. I kind of like this one. Um, but basically, what what the it's going to do is you. And there's even some pairings here in the clinic sites thing. So it's going to just basically change your font everywhere. There's a headline. It's going to um, it's going to change it. And then everywhere there's um, other text, it's going to use Lato. So this is Lato text, and this is Montserrat. So um, you can Google um, great font pairings, and then it's going to give you, there's lots of these different um, options for you. Okay. And, and I really would just suggest people go to chat GPT. You can do a free search totally. as well there and, say, yeah, and, exactly. and yeah. ask, ask the AI, what, what, what are good font pairings? And it will give you some direct recommendations. 